Hello everyone, this is Benjamin Master Loba coming at you guys with another video. This time we're going to continue the Dungeon Delve series. I stopped doing that for a while because that um, I wanted to move on to other things and those videos didn't really seem to be too terribly popular compared to the um, other videos and I don't think people are getting as much use out of those particular encounters as they were about like the newer videos I've had about um, XP and total party kills and stuff those seem to be more useful to people than uh, encounter videos but I figured I would try now that I got my channel's growing I got 26 subscribers now might not sound like a lot but it is to me and thank you all for your support um but I was gonna throw out another one of my encounters out there it's a very long encounter, so I might make a multiple part video if there's interest in it. But it is um, essentially a gauntlet of sorts. Um, if you guys think you're going to be interested in this, um, let me know in the comments below. Because like I said, this is just kind of like a test to see if you guys are interested in me continuing my Dungeon Dell thing. And this was inspired by Dungeon Master Johnny's. Um, weekly encounters which I left um which I announced to everyone in the first Dungeon Dell video I ever made I'm not trying to rip them off or steal them and if he is offended by this in any way I'll stop no argument this is so I'm just gonna go ahead and get to it like I said this is a gauntlet um it's been a while I think it was seven parts or so I think I still have my notes somewhere but I'm gonna tell you guys the intro of it because I remember that pretty well pretty vividly. So the party, it can be used for any level. I used it for a mid-level campaign, but this can be used really nicely for a high-level one as well. And with a little bit of working, it can be used for a low-level as well. But the general premise is there's some type of item they need. I had a magical artifact that their, their enemy was trying to get that they had to get to first, and it had a powerful guardian, which you had to test a gauntlet to see if you were worthy of retrieving said item. Um, you can use that, or you can use a, maybe the PCs have a prisoner. Like, I mean, there's a prisoner that they need to get to, or um, it's just a part of your dungeon, and just there's a bunch of stuff you can do with this. The just trying to make sure that the guardian is higher level than the PCs, so that they can't just say that they're going to attack the guardian and be done with it. Just I mean, don't make him invincible unless that's what you want, but what I did is I made him high enough level to be a really good challenge to him, but they didn't attack him, thankfully. Um, this gauntlet consists of, it can be puzzles, monsters, um, all those kind of things. My first one was an interesting encounter with a... Um, battled two beholders who were enslaved by the guardian and the room was filled with it was a giant dome room and it was filled with reflective um, materials so whenever the beholder shot a ray at the wall or the roof it reflected but the floor wasn't reflected so it would eventually stop bouncing everywhere but you can make everything reflective or nothing reflective if you want but it was two enslaved beholders and they um their rays if they miss the players and they're like if they shoot a disintegration ray and it misses it can ricochet off of the wall and that can cause some pretty interesting things and you can just re-roll it um re-roll the attack on that to see if it hits uh, the floor or a player one of the beholders or what have you just you make it you do a random roll to see who it randomly hits or make it so that um, it hits the closest person and if it misses then it can either go to the floor or it can go to the wall and bounce again or the roof or what have you. That can provide some pretty interesting uh, combat there. Also um, another one of the rooms that was like the intro to the gauntlet that I showed my players. One of the rooms was a puzzle room and um, you this can be kind of hard to do from a role playing standpoint. It was pretty hard for me because I knew what I had in my mind, but it was it was hard getting it across to the players. There's different 
like a fountains type things. I think I'm saying that right. You know, kind of like a think bird bath, like a marble bird bath type looking thing. But it's not a bird bath. I'm saying that's a visual representation of kind of what they look like. And then there's one big fountain in the center of the room, and the other um, smaller ones are spread out across the room, up some stairs, down some stairs, what have you. And they're all filled with blood and there's pipes going to the center and it pumps the blood from the fountains into the central fountain. Each um, fountain has to require a certain amount of blood in it. You can do this very simply by inscribing, like having there being like inscribed a number of pints or uh, whatever else amount that you would want to be filled up with, you can do it a lot more um, complicated than just that. They could be absolutely nothing, and the players just have to fumble around, and realize that they have to put more blood in this one and empty blood in this one, which is similar to what I did. I made it. I kind of used there's some inscriptions that can give them hints. They didn't understand anything, <laughs> but. Um, what it is is some, they all have blood in them already, and some of them need more, some of them need to um, have blood taken out of them. Um, and then eventually, once they're all done and over with, there's like a little lever by each fountain. They pull the lever, it begins pumping the blood to the fountain. Now, if the fountain gets pumped the wrong amount of blood from that particular, um, sm the smaller fountain, then a blood rot spawns, which is a creature from the Heroes of Horror, but I'm sure that not everybody who's watching this has Heroes of Horror. So simply, you can, it's a ooze, might as well, you can say it's a ooze with the undead template. Make a red, just put it, any ooze you want for your appropriate level, make them red, and give them the undead template, and make them like a blood, a blood creature. Or you can use the blood rot from the um, Heroes of Horror, like I did, but you can adjust the oozes um, challenge rating based on whatever creatures the level is and I put it so that one spawns in the near the um, small fountain when it was the wrong amount of blood was entered you can do it any way you want but that's what I did and um, players are pretty surprised by it so that, that can be some good fun there um, there's an, another room it's room three now. This is more of a... It's kind of a puzzle kind of design to punish the players a little. Just get them hurting. Um, there's a bunch of chains that they have to hook to themselves and walk across the suspended platform and pull different leather levers in the order. You can do very simple. Each lever is numbered and they just go there, pull them like that, but each step, they take damage. Because the chains are hooked way back over there and they have to hook it into themselves. The Guardian won't let them take the test without it. So, it's, um, you can adjust it low health, high health, whatever you want, or even do some constitution damage in there if they stay on too long. I also had some um, of the platforms where they stepped on them, they would collapse and um, the hooks could either suspend them or they could try to jump to the other one in time and made a reflex save. Um, the way I did the levers is that you had to be in a certain part of the platform to see what lever had what number on it and um, it was a very simple puzzle. I kind of came up with that one on the fly so um, yeah, you can make it a lot more complex if you want but um, that's, I liked that idea because of the player it's a lot more um, punishing than simply the players going and pulling this lever and they're like, okay, nothing happened, just pull all the levers until they get something right. This is one creative, well, I thought creative way to punish them outside of a, um, you know, like a standard arrow trap or something like that or a frost trap. It's each step they take damages them across this platform and if they go over to the lever and they pull a wrong lever, then they have to go all the way back to that lever and unpull it to make it go in the sequence and it'll punish them and then you can have it so that all the one player takes all the chains on which they would I would recommend it making them very very difficult for them to survive that or you can encourage cooperation by having a number of chains equal to your party and each person taking on one chain 
Um, and so they have to work together for it, which is what I tried to do. But of course, the um, two of my players took on as like a group of five players, I think, and he took on three chains or something like that. And um, yeah, that didn't work out too well for him. He survived, but it was he was severely damaged. And I did do some constitution damage to him for taking that many chains on and all the blood and flesh ripping and everything and I did a couple of temporary constitution damage to him which that's completely up to you guys if you want to do that to him or not but those are the first three rooms of the gauntlet um, if you guys like them let me know below by leaving a like or comment or sharing the video um, if you did like them I'll make another Dungeon Dell video soon with um, more on the gauntlet also I'm not moving guys, not anytime soon anyways, so sorry about the lack of videos and I hope to put up some more videos soon. If you got any suggestions for videos, leave them down in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Dislike it if you didn't, but please leave a reason below in the comments why you didn't like it. This is Dungeon Master Loba, signing off.